Shalom, 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 this is not how to go on the plantation, man. All right, let's get into it. Sirach chapter 11 and verse number one. Sirach 11 and one says, Wisdom lifteth up the head of him that is of low degree and maketh him to sit among great men, man. So wisdom, it'll lift your head up. Wisdom, I mean, and that's not that's not necessarily really talking about getting in the pride, but wisdom is going to lift your head up, man. You understand that? When you don't have no wisdom, you stagnant and you on the same level. Wisdom kind of come into play and you sit before great men. You understand that? Wisdom, I tell you to be diligent in your business. Like Proverbs 22 and 29. You understand that? Let's read on. Verse number two. It says, Commend not a man for his beauty, neither abhor a man for his outward appearance. All right? So just because a man might, he might have that drip on today. <laughs> he might have that, he might put that thing on today. You know what I'm saying? Don't, don't just come in, man, because he came out looking nice, right? This man, surely he has on this beautiful garment. He's a man of the Lord. Surely because he has a Rolex on his wrist, a, Ro a Rolex on his wrist, he handles his business, man. That, that's not how to, especially with our people. <laughs> that's how you know this talking about Jake, especially with our people. Our people get, you know, we, we, we own uh, $20,000 cars, but in houses worth less than $10,000. You understand that? Right, we have $50,000 cars, but we paying rent in our apartment, man. That's our people to the appendity. So don't praise a man. Don't praise a man just because of his outward appearance, man. Right? It says the bee is it's like it says the bee is little among such as fly, but her fruit is the chief of sweet things. Right? So a bee is little, man. People don't even like bees. You see a bee, kind of swat at it. You trying to get around it, right? You see a bee, you don't want to be around that bee. But guess what? That fruit, right, and the, and the product and the and the, and the um and the sources that it brings is the chief among all things, right? And that's what we're gonna go into this chapter. Just like last chapter, we talked about the meek and the lowly versus the stupid proud, right? We talk about the meek and the lowly wisdom man versus the the proud don't know what's going on, man. You understand that? The Lord's gonna kind of get in depth with describing how the low. Man, they gonna be the ones that the ones that the, they gonna be the ones that the Lord is looking for, man. You understand that? Let's read on. It says, uh, "Boast not of thy clothing and raiment, and exalt not thyself in the day of honor, for the works of the Lord are wonderful, and His works among men are hidden." Right. So the works of the Lord are wonderful, not your works. You understand that? Every time you do something good, every time you know you see something like uh, 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 you see the fruit of your labor. Or whatever it may be, it's all praises to the most high. Right? Not all praises to me. That's yeah, off. You understand that? And don't boast of your clothing and raiment. Really what that's going into is don't be boasting of your just your outward appearance, man. Right? You a woman, you got all these garments you done sold for brothers, right? You got all these meals and recipes you done sent out and put the whole nation on. You done discover the whole new meal. Right? And then put the whole nation on. Right? You boasting of these things, right? Don't boast of these things that's outwardly, right? Boast of the things that's inwardly. Right? That's Romans 2 and 29. You understand that? Both of the things that's in with it. Don't boast of your clothing and raiment. Right? Just because you put on an extra nice garment, you came out looking extra nice or whatever physically it may be, these things are deceiving. Right? Let's read on. Verse 5. It says, Many kings have set down. It's like it. it says, Many kings have set down upon the. Pro it's like it. Many kings have set down upon the ground. And one that was never thought of have worn the crown one that was never thought of meaning that literally that brother that's in the back literally that brother that that, that he's in the back he's not thought of he's going to be the one to wear the crown man so that should say a lot to you brothers and sisters that just you just want to be seen you want to have all the views you understand know, all of these things the lord said the one that is not even thought of he's going to be the one to wear the crown at the end of the day right and that's to teach us a lesson to be content Whatever whatever situation we're in to be content. I want to get that precept because that I mean like that that's that, that teaches us that, right? 
That's that kind of that's kind of the break, the takeaway that I'm getting today, right? Let's get that in Philippians chapter four and verse number eleven. Philippians four and eleven says, "Not that I speak in respect of one, for I have learned, in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content." You understand that? So whatever you're going through, right, or whatever type of situation the Lord got you living through, you got to be content with that, man. Because the Lord said, the one that's not even being thought of, he's going to be the one to wear the crown. <clears throat> yep. You too busy not being thought of. You're trying to get ahead. You're trying to do this, do this, to be pleased to men. You understand that? You, you're you going to be sat on the ground. Right? Like, don't set the Lord. Let's read on. Verse number uh, six. Uh, verse number seven. Uh, verse number six. It says, many uh, mighty men, many mighty men have been greatly disgraced. And the honorable delivered into other men's hands, right? So mighty, even mighty men, right? The Lord is dealing with strange calamities. The Lord is with exposing you before everybody, right? That's how the Lord get down, man. And that's really, that really, really what that does. And it shows us how to uh, fear the Lord even more. Because no situation or no, 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 uh, no benefits or whatever that you may have is guaranteed to you or is guaranteed to uh, be, you know, to apply to your life, man. That's why you give thanks to the Most High for everything that you got, because it's not guaranteed to you. Just because you live in a good situation, you know what I'm you, you take care of business or whatever it may be, don't mean that's guaranteed for you for, for, for forever. You understand that? Uh, let's read on. Uh, and verse number, uh, well, let me read it, verse 6 again. I'm going to read on in the middle of the verse. And it says, And the honorable deliver into, the, uh, the honorable de deliver into other men's hands. Right, so the Lord chooses to uh, chooses other men to reign in your stead, right? Just like King David, he was righteous, but guess what? Solomon reigned in his stead and fulfilled that office, right? That that's just how it goes. Same way that he just he went away, new man on the scene is the same way you can be great and then brought utterly low, and then you're removed, and then another man is brought on the scene. So imagine if you're a man of renown and then you're brought low, and then you, you then you get taken off the scene. Imagine how, how much people are not even going to think about you then. That's why you just stay in your lane, man. The Lord's going to teach you to stay in your damn lane. That's going to be the title of the video. All right, let's read on. Stay in your damn lane, man. The Lord is dealing with the Lord. So stay in your lane, all right? It says, uh, Many mighty men have been greatly dismembered. Verse number seven. Blame not before thou hast examined the truth. And just stand first and then rebuke. Stay in your lane, right? Here it is, you hear a matter, you might hear a little something, right? That's why they say in the world, you all up in the Kool-Aid, but do not know the flavor. <laughs> you all in the Kool-Aid, but don't know the flavor, man. You all in the Kool-Aid, but don't know the flavor. That's what the Bible just said. It says, blame not, verse 7, blame not before thou hast heard the cause. And uh, 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 it says, uh, understand first and then rebuke. And that's common sense, right? That's good doctrine right there. Right, don't speak on matters that you don't know nothing about. Right, don't get involved in other pe people's business that you do not know anything about. Right, verse number eight, verse number eight. Answer not before thou hast heard the cause. Neither interrupt men in the midst of their talk. Right, because that's order. Me personally, if I'm having a conversation with you, and we're talking, this is me personally, and we're talking. Right, if you interrupt me, I don't want to speak anymore. Because what you got to understand the ins and outs of a dialogue. If somebody's interrupting you while you're speaking, that lets you know that subconsciously or in their mind, they don't care about anything that you're saying. They don't actually want to, uh, you know, actually want to continue the dialogue. Now, this is when you're having a, now what I just said applies to when you're having a dialogue about a, a, a matter to where so what you're saying, every word that you're saying actually matters. Like, for example, right, you might be in a workplace. You might be in the workplace and you're talking about religion or politics. Those kind of conversations. Those kind of sticky conversations. You understand that? That's when if somebody is cutting you off, they don't care what you got to say, man. You understand that? That might not apply to every That might not apply to every conversation. We might be talking about football. And I say, man, Bobby Wagner, he should have stayed a little bit while. And then you say, no, 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 no. You cut me off. That's not, that's not applying to that. You understand that? This applies to... Uh, matters that uh that need to be established right matters that is uh, a topic that's 
uh, prevalent or, or as, you know what I'm saying, or as, or as real sensitive, right? If you interrupt me, there's no need for me to continue talking because you obviously, you, you don't, you're not literally listening to me, right? That's how you get into situations to where though you're talking to somebody, they cut you off, you start talking, they're like, oh, I wanted to hear it. No, you didn't. Right? Or you're talking to somebody, they cut you off, and you keep talking like you did, like you don't hear them cutting you off, and then there's just a whole bunch of confusion, and now you're back to square one. Right? That's why you don't cut people off. You don't want to damn talk in circles and talk in loops. Listen to what somebody got to say. Keep it in your mind what you want to respond with, whether it's right or wrong. When it's time your time to speak, speak. That's that's common sense, man. That's how it goes, man. It's in and out of a dialogue. You understand that? Verse number nine. It says. Strive not in a man, Slucky. Right? Sirach chapter 11 and verse 9. It says, Strive not in a matter that uh, concerneth thee not, and sit not in judgment with sinners. Right? So mind your own business, man. You you trying to get into everybody else's business, and it has nothing to do with you, man. That's off. Right? The Lord called that off. Right? The Lord not dealing with that at the end of the day, right? Let's read on. It says, um, Verse 10, it says, My son, meddle not with many matters. It says, For if thou meddle much, thou shalt not be innocent. And if thou follow after, thou shalt not obtain, neither shalt thou escape by fleeing. Because right? at the end of the day, we read about that in a previous chapter about James, the third chapter. It tells you don't be a, 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 a many masters, or don't be a master of many things. Meaning, like, now, you just trying to do too much, man. Right? You, you, you try, you're trying to do too much. You don't want to do too much in terms of, like, your hobbies. You don't want to do too much in terms of, like, your professional, your, your professionalism. You understand that? You want to perfect knowing the scriptures. You want to perfect your spirit. Right? You want to you want to take your time with your hobbies and your, and your, and your things. Right? Let's read it again. It says, um, meddle not with many matters. Right? So don't be trying to do, don't be trying to be in everybody's business. Right? Don't be trying to, uh, Right, don't be trying to um, you're trying to uh, get into everything at once, right? You're just trying to get into everything, right? In the world, they say I'll, I'll probably put my hands on everything, right? Or I'm on everything, right? Don't matter with many matters. It says, uh, for right, this is very situational, right? But let's read on. It says, for if thou matter much, thou shalt uh, not be uh, innocent, right? Because then you into everything, it's like you, damn, you involved in everything, you like that. No, without a wonder, you didn't, uh, you didn't end up getting involved. And X Y Z, you understand that? Because you in everything, right? Verse number ten, my son. Uh, verse number eleven. There is one that laboreth and taketh a pains, and maketh haste, and is so much the more behind. Again, there is one that is slow, and hath need of help, wanting ability. Right? It says wanting ability. Right, most I protect this, right? It says, and full of poverty. Right? He's slow. Uh, let me read it again. Again, there's another that is slow and has need of help, wanting ability, and full of poverty, right? Let's read on. It says, um, yet the eye of the Lord looketh upon him uh for good and set him up from his low estate. Right, I'm gonna keep saying that the Lord is dealing with the lowly and the meek. Right, remember the remember the definition of meek. Right, the definition of meek is you know that man that's lowly. He's in need of help. Right. It says, um, verse number thirteen. It says, and lifted up his head from from uh, misery. Right, so that uh, many that saw it marveled at him. Right, because people that see that you see the meek, you see the lowly. When the most high actually help us help us the meek out. You understand that? You you marvel like damn, like, I can't believe that worked out. Or like that, okay, that brother, you know, he doing XYZ and marvel. Like marvel is not always negative. Marvel is like, oh damn, that brother, that sister, okay, let's see, let's see what he's doing. Right? You marveling when the most high works for these uh, men and women, right? The meek and the little. It says, um uh, let's read on. Uh let's read on. Slaggy. Uh, verse number 13 uh, so like Verse number 14 It says prosperity and adversity Life and death Poverty and riches uh, Come of the Lord Right Wisdom, knowledge and understanding of the law 
or of the Lord. Love and the way of good works. Or it says, uh, Lord, it says, and the way of good works are from him. All right, so every good thing you do or every ounce or piece of understanding that you have is from the Lord. Yeah, as men, we have to be taught. But you got to understand, we teach people all the time. All right, just because I teach somebody, they might not get it. Guess what? That's of the Lord. If I taught you and I, and I spoke to you and we had a conversation and you understood it, that was of the Lord. Right? Not just because I taught it to you, right? right? Not because I broke it down correctly. That was of the Lord, man. You understand that? Let's read on. It says, um, right, these things are of the Lord. And then it says, um, let's look at it. Uh, verse number 16. It says, error and darkness had their beginning together with sinners. And evil shall wax old, right? Evil shall wax old with them uh, that glory therein. Right, so at the end of the day, that's why the Lord said, fret, that, fret not that self of evil doers. At the end of the day, that's why the Lord said, don't be tripping when you see the um, uh, 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 the workers of iniquity flourish, right? Because, let's get that precept in Psalms 91. Because at the end of the day, their ruin is going to be that they should be destroyed and should be scattered forevermore. For thou most high forevermore, follow thy enemies, O Lord, follow thy enemies shall perish. I'm quoting Psalms 91 and where it's like I'm quoting Psalms 92, but let's read it. Um, Psalms chapter uh, 92, right? It's like I gotta find the verse. Right? Psalms chapter 92 uh, and verse number number 6. It says, A brutish man knoweth not, neither doeth a fool understand this. When all the workers of iniquity do flourish, it is that they shall be destroyed forevermore, right? It says, but thou, O Lord, almost high forevermore. Right, so this wisdom, knowledge, understanding, good works, all that stuff comes of the Lord. But guess what? What does Sarvak say? Let's go back to that in Sarvak chapter 11 and verse number 17, uh, verse number 16. Error and darkness had their beginning together with sinners, and evil shall wax old with them that glory therein. Right, so all that darkness, all that evil, and all that sin, all that stuff that you get into, yeah, okay. Yeah, please your flesh for a little bit. All right, yeah, I see. Oh, yeah, you got a little money. I see what's going on. You ain't keep the Sabbath day. You get paid the extra, you know what I'm saying? You get paid the extra little couple of dollars. Okay, okay. Oh, what? You got a new car? Because you've been working on the Sabbath day? Okay, okay. Boom, guess what? The Lord said that stuff gets old, man. Right? Just because you want to go, okay, oh, you smoking big blunts, huh? Big blunts, oh, big blunts, okay? You're high, having fun. Okay, guess what? That's gonna get old. Okay, guess what? Oh, you crack crabs. Oh man, you put the butter sauce in there just like that. Oh, okay, okay, crab cakes, Baltimore crab cakes. That's what's up. Tastes good, huh? It gets old, man. Right? Oh, you dabbling with the harlot. Oh, you with her? Oh, that's what she looked like. She got her body all out like that. Oh, you having fun, huh? You pleasing your flesh, huh? Guess what? That stuff gets old, man. That stuff gets old. When that old man creeps up, it's called the old man for a damn reason. Right, those ideologies and those philosophies that you used to live by, that you used to enjoy, that you used to have fun doing, that stuff gets old. That's why you're in the truth and everything is new, man. So stop questioning the Lord. Stop questioning yourself when those things come about you. Like the Lord didn't warn you about the old man coming about, and like the Lord didn't just tell us in the book of Sirach, chapter 11, and verse number 16, that that sin and all that temporary flesh, that stuff gets old, man. Leave it alone, right? It's gonna get old regardless. Imagine you going back to it, just to kind of dip or dabble into it. It's going to get old again. That's why it's temporary, man. It's temporary, right? Uh, verse number 17. It says, The gift of the Lord remaineth with the godly, and his favor bringeth prosperity forever. It says, uh, There is that waxeth rich by his uh, waxeth rich by his uh, wariness, right, and pinching, and this is the portion of his reward, right, it says, whereas he saith, I have found rest, and now will eat continually of my goods, and yet he knoweth not what time shall come, right, he knoweth not what time shall come upon him, and that he must leave those things 
to others and die, right? So you might be living a good life, right? You living a good life, you got everything you need, right? But you living, you living a good life, you got everything you need, right? So lucky, you living a good life, right? According to Sarah 11 and 19, you living a good life and you have everything you need, right? But the most I told you, you still yet know it not these things that should come upon you, right? And I'm gonna have to upload a part two. So lucky is around my upload a part two. My phone about to die, right? And I gotta handle some business. Most I will, so lucky. Most I will, and I see y'all for the next part two. You know what I'm saying? Shalom.